Hello and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. So it's about a year late, but here it is, finally. We're going to be playing Baryonic Predicament by Miga. Miga? I'm still not sure how you pronounce that name. <laughs> so this is very much an abstract kind of puzzle mod, disguised as a Half-Life 2 level. It's very, very interesting to look at. Miga's always had this very, very distinctive style when it comes to his maps. Because they're kind of set in this real world place, but it never quite feels right. You have these very, very strange kind of puzzles with absolutely no attempt to kind of disguise them to fit in with the environment. Now, the environments themselves are amazing, especially in this particular mod. Miga's really outdone himself here. It's, there's this detail crammed into absolutely every orifice. It's amazing, actually. There's some really, really great visuals here. And it carries over to the puzzles, too. They're very intelligently designed. Uh, it's mainly due to a use of colour. Uh, there's very, very striking colours used. And if you pay attention to these colours, they'll not only tell you where to go in the level, but what kind of objects you should be paying attention to. So in this first area here we've got a little bit of exploration, so you can come around this side area. And uh, you can't really progress here but there's some supplies you can pick up if you explore around a bit, which is always nice to see. And again, notice the giant blue door here, it kind of stands out in the environment, it's the only really blue thing here. This is something that's repeated a lot, just very very bright primary colours used in the environment to denote certain things. So here's our first puzzle, and this is where the colour red comes into play. This is kind of what Miga uses to kind of grab the player's attention. So if there's anything with a red kind of colour on it, it usually means it's important. It's usually used in a puzzle or some kind of means of progression in some way. You just need to figure out how it works. So this kind of puzzle here, you have to insert the rod into the uh, contraption here, then activate it and it'll open the door for you. Now, the only gripe I had with this first puzzle here is that it's way too fiddly to get right. I mean, it should really just snap into place once the player gets close. As you can see, it's uh, very, very annoying, so we'll just skip ahead to uh, when I finally get it in there. There we go. I mean, the gameplay there is obviously the player has to work out to insert the rod into the uh, contraption. But once they work that out, it should be very, very easy to do so. There shouldn't be some kind of fiddly, fiddling around just trying to actually insert the rod. Man, this episode is going to be full of innuendo, isn't it? <laughs> so now we can hit that button and open up the gate on the outside. It's great how you can actually see the gate open outside the window. You always want to communicate to the player what, what his actions are doing in the level. If that window wasn't there, it'd be very, very confusing what the what that button would actually do. We've got a nice vista here. It's nice to look at. This is our second puzzle. Again, it's very, very easy to start with. Again, it's kind of getting the player into a rhythm of find a strange abstract thing in the environment and work out how it works. <laughs> I mean, it makes absolutely no sense in a real-world setting why this would be here, but in pure gameplay terms, it's, uh, it's very well introduced and thought out. But yeah, it's, there's always this kind of fight between the puzzles in the map and the visuals. They never quite gel together enough, and it's kind of something that Migger's always had in his maps. I think it would really annoy me if the puzzles weren't so good, but because the puzzles are so much fun, I just kind of end up forgiving any kind of fourth wall breaking stuff in the level. Another thing I didn't really like with this mod is the way it gives you items, like here, you just pick up a gravity gun on the floor, there's no real introduction to it, there's no kind of setup for it, you just pick it up. I think I talk about this a lot in mods where 
you should really be introducing new items and abilities the player gets in some kind of interesting way rather than just you walk along and it's on the floor in front of you. There's something Mega does a lot in this mod which I really don't like. It should always be fun when the player gets a new item. So you can see we've got a combine force field and you can follow the wire along the wall here to uh, find out what it's being powered by. Again, this is another visual mechanic that Mega uses a lot, following wires around the level to find out what they're connected to. Now while this mod does have a very very strong puzzle focus, there are moments of very very intense combat in it, which I really really enjoyed. And even the combat in this mod feels like a, a test. This feels like it's like a reskinned really portal in a way, this mod. It's, uh, it's really interesting to play. The combat itself, it's, it's very very waved based. And, uh, there's a couple of combat moments in it, especially near the end, where it becomes very very difficult. But there's all kinds of little mechanics you can use in the various arenas to help you survive. But it always feels like the map is testing you, like, learn this mechanic, do this survive against these enemies. It's always testing the player. And that's kind of its main focus. It's not trying to tell a story, it's just trying to test the player's abilities. Come back out into this outdoor area and explore around a little bit more. Always great to find supplies. These watermelons are kind of interesting. I'm wondering if there's some kind of special mechanic with them where you, you have to collect them all or something, because they seem to be hidden around all the levels in strange places, and uh, there's a part later on in the mod where a watermelon is sort of almost presented to you out of a window, and it's just caught my eye as something interesting that you don't normally see. So I'm wondering if there's something there that I've completely missed. So this area is cool, we've got a fenced off area with a button in it and it's up to the player to work out how to get there. Now remember this puzzle here because it's, it's cool, I'll come back and talk about it again later, It'll probably be in part 2 or 3 of the video. But you'll notice here as the player is navigating around here trying to find his way to the uh, button, you have to jump onto this bright yellow containers here. And again this is coming back to the use of colour in the mod as a uh, kind of a teaching mechanic for the player so this bright yellow containers are always used to be jumped on you very very rarely ever see them used in other places there's a, a very sp specific place later on in the mod where you have to use the yellow barrels to uh, jump across to somewhere else again I thought it was really cool the way that they reused the same model and keeping the color theme intact Just going back to the visuals for a moment, you can always tell it's a mega map just by looking at it. I, you could show me 20 or 30 maps and I'd be able to pick out all the mega maps in that set quite easily. It's such a distinctive visual style. There's just detail absolutely chock full all over the place. It's, th it's the lighting mostly that gives it away. Mega tends to favour lots and lots of small radius lights with low light values. So you end up getting this kind of speckled lighting look around the levels. That's, that's a terrible way to describe it. I'm sure there's a more eloquent words I could use but I don't know any. <laughs> it's very very distinctive. There's a lot of contrast between light and dark in his maps. It's a really really nice look. So again here we can uh, follow the wires to open this up and again using the generator mechanic. So those generators, there's always something nearby that can make it explode and uh, open up a route for you. There's always using the same mechanics over and over so you can learn how they work. So 
Okay. Again, you can see what I mean about the abstractness of the environment. I mean, having a little bridge like that would just no sense to it be there in real life. But this reminds me more of a quake map than a real place. Just the environment served the gameplay. While the stuff looks like it's made out of concrete and wood, it's uh, it's very much just a, a test chamber. Do got some combat. I really didn't like the introduction of it. Again, um, it seems to be something Mega uh, struggles with quite a lot. It's just the introduction of new things in the map. So this should have been a big epic moment having this first encounter, but combine just kind of drop in. There's no, there's no music. There's no kind of little scripted moment and busting in through doors and walls or whatever. And again here, we've got introducing a new weapon. It's just lying on the floor in front of the player. I mean, yes, it makes sure the player picks it up because it's right in the doorway. Very, very hard to miss, but it's just no fun. <laughs> so this gunship fight is fairly well thought out. So you're given a rocket launcher, but you have to kind of explore around a bit to actually find ammo for it. So you can't just sit in the doorway and uh, take out the gunship zero risk to yourself, you have to actually explore around the environment to find uh, more ammo. Which is the way gunship fights are supposed to work. There should be an element of risk to get the reward of more rockets. You occasionally get a couple of extra combine soldiers spawning into the arena as well. Just to spice things up a little bit. So it took me a little while to actually find the rocket uh, crate here. It's actually right on top of me in this building here. The issue is that you just can't see it from the floor, so I imagine people could get stuck here just never really finding the ammo cache. If it's an important item like this that you actually need to proceed. I would think uh, it might be a better idea to put it in plain view and just have a little have the gameplay of how do I get up there rather than, than to actually find it. Now we get to go back to the start of the level to get back to that bridge that was raised through the water. Uh, Mega does a fairly nice job of repopulating these old areas, so it's not just a, a slog through a ghost town. One thing I would have liked is there's a fence down the end of this uh, alley here. It would have been nice if that fence had just opened to let the player through that way. As it stands now, you have to go back inside the building and all the way around. And there's this curiosity. I'm betting there's a secret somewhere that you used this on. I could not find where it was. It's probably a, a piece of ground somewhere that you can dig up with it by placing it on it or something. Oh, yeah, I don't want to spoil everything for, you, for everyone in this video. <laughs> so yeah, this, this fence would have been great if it just opened up for the player. Seems like an obvious shortcut back to the start. These first few combined fights you get at the start feel the most natural out of all the combat in the mod. Later on it's definitely more of an arena with survive X waves before you can continue. And while that sounds fairly dull on paper, the actual fights themselves are incredibly fun. A lot of it is down to the actual design of the arenas that you're fighting in, and a lot of it is down to the secondary mechanics in the map which uh, spice things up a little bit. We can talk more about them as we get to those areas, but I really, really enjoyed the combat in this mod.
A little bit more cover here would have been nice. You've got this giant open area with hit scan enemies, no cover. Just kind of end up stuck behind this uh, corner, waiting for them to get closer. Would have been nice if you could attack into them a little bit. Here's our path. Once we go into this building here, this is where the mod starts to go into crazy puzzle mode. This is very much like the, I suppose you could call it a tutorial in a way, kind of getting the player to, to actually get into puzzle mode, giving them some easy puzzles to start with. Now things start getting stranger. <laughs> Here we've got a, a lift that needs some power. I don't even know if it needs power, it's just a puzzle that you need to solve to activate the lift. Which, uh, for some reason, that's never explained, is you have to break the beam in this, uh, this thing here. I mean, you can kind of just tell from the visual of the thing you can pick up that it's obvious it's meant to go in there. At least it was obvious to me. I, I think I read somewhere that people had a lot of problems with this puzzle, kind of working out what the hell was actually meant to be done here. but. Usually, Mega's puzzles can be kind of worked out by it's a case of the square goes in the square hole. If you follow that logic, you can work out most of his puzzles. <laughs> so here's the first, I suppose you'd call it the first full-on puzzle. And uh, there's going to be a lot of editing here because uh, this stumped me for a little while. So I've sped up some bits, slowed down some bits, just to kind of show what I'm talking about here. So you're given a lot of lasers shooting up into the sky, various contraptions hanging from the ceiling. Now just from a design standpoint, I think this first puzzle has a couple of issues. So you've got the buttons on the left and right here which control the rotation of the laser and the center button stops it. Problem is that you can't see where the laser is when you're using the buttons, so you have to kind of kind of guess when to turn off the laser and then kind of adjust and you have to look up then look down and I think it, it could have been a more elegant way of doing it we're skipping around a bit here so you have to get the orientation of a laser in line with the orientation of the receptacle up there so you notice those the laser and the receptacle are aligned this wasn't too obvious at first but once you work that out the, the whole puzzle starts kind of holding into place. Now there are a couple of problem areas, so you notice here there's a, a block on the laser which is kind of cool. Just moving six lasers into position would have been quite boring so it's nice that there's something to kind of break up the monotony a bit here. So there's actually two blockers. You need to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of gameplay involved here in actually moving the blockers. So this is the one that stumped me the most, is that because it's so dark, you can't see the piece of wood there that's holding it in place. That's what took me the longest amount of time to actually see. It just looked like another piece of metal on the device. It didn't really stand out enough. So this one is just a simple physics object that you can move like so. Like that is how you solve the puzzle. This area looks great with the kind of alternating uh, orange and blue lights along the walls, the huge arches, it's very very cool. Typical MIGA style as well. That's the end of part one. Part two coming soon.